Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Patricia Iwika. So today I will be talking about a near infrared spectroscopic sensing system for online real-time calmic quality and progesterone determination. Okay, so before I proceed, I would like to talk briefly about my background. I studied biotechnology at the Ebony State University. Ebony State University is located at the uh, eastern part, the west eastern part of Nigeria. Okay, so during my undergraduate studies at Hokkaido at Ebony State University, I got shortlisted for a one year short exchange, exchange program at Hokkaido University. The program is called Houston Program. So before the program ended in 2013, I was opportuned to secure a scholarship, a MEST scholarship for my master's study. So I went back to Nigeria. I finished my undergraduate studies and then I returned back to Kaido University where I did my master's and PhD program. After my PhD program uh, in, 20, in year 2019, I became a postdoctoral associate at the Field Science Center for Northern Biosphere at Hokkaido University. Okay, so this is the outline of my presentation. So I'm gonna start by introducing, by, I'll start by, with the general introduction, and then I will talk about the development of a near infrared spectroscopic sensing system. And then I would also talk about the milking system, how the milking was performed. I'm going to explain that. And then I would also talk about the, the measurement accuracy of this NIR spectrum spectroscopic sensing system for cow milk quality determination during milking. And after that, we will take a five minutes break and then return to... Uh, and then I'll talk about the next study, which is the measurement accuracy of the mu progesterone concentration. The measurement accuracy of this NIR spectroscopic sensing system for progesterone concentration determination. And then I will proceed to the final project, which is, which is the installation of this NIR sensing system into an automatic milking system. I will talk about the measurement accuracy of this NIR sensing system when installed into an automatic milking system, and then acknowledgments and question and answer section. Okay. Dairy farming is labor intensive, as you may know. This is because it involves uh, routines such as feeding, milking, manure treatment, and livestock management. Large scale dairy farmers uh, manage their livestock in groups. And this is a system known as the herd management. However, for the production of high quality milk, individual cow management is the best method. This is because monitoring the information of each cow is very important for dairy farmers, is very important to, for the production of high quality milk. And so there has been a need by dairy farmer for, for a novel system that can help them to determine the milk quality of individual cow during milking. And so, uh, okay. Over the past 30 decades, near infrared spectroscopy has proven to be a wonderful and a useful technology. It has proven to be useful for the qualitative and quantitative analysis of agricultural commodities. This is because it's a non-destructive analytical method. It's rapid, it saves time, it's chemical and pretreatment free. NIR spectroscopy has been applied in various fields of study. It has been used for the physical chemical analysis of agricultural commodities such as rice, wheat, fruit, milk, vegetables, and so on. However, there is a problem. There, has, there is no system 
that has been developed somewhere else elsewhere. There is no system for online real-time monitoring of the milk quality of individual cow, of each cow during milking. And so our aim, the aim of this study was to develop a novel technology to develop a near infrared spectroscopic sensing system for the milk quality determination of individual cow during milking. This is very novel. And then to take our study to the next level by installing this NIR sensing system, NIR spectroscopic sensing system into an automatic milking system, and then determine the measurement accuracy of this NIR sensing system for the milk quality, uh, for, for the milk quality of individual cow during milking. And of course, the final goal was uh, to use this NIR sensing system in an automatic milking system, which has to do with commercialization okay, of the, of the NIR sensing system. So now I'm going to um, describe the NIR spectroscopic sensing system developed in this study. So here is the specification of the NIR spectroscopic instruments. As you can see, it consists of three major devices. Number one is the spectrum sensor. The spectrum sensor consisted of the consists of three halogen lamp, which is the light source, the optical fiber, the milk chamber, the yes, and so on. And then the second one, which is the spectrometer. It consists of the diffraction gradient, um, the optical density, and the the wavelength between seven hundred to one thousand and fifty nanometer the photo cell, the thermal controller, and also the data processing computer. The data processing computer we used was a, a laptop computer, a Windows 7 laptop computer. And the spectrum data obtained using that computer was in every 20 seconds, as you can see in this table. Here is the overview of the NIR spectroscopic sensing system that we developed in this study. Here is the line tubes, the milk flow meter, the computer, the spectrometer. Here is the three halogen lamps. Here, is, here are the samplers, the plastic cups. And uh, the spectrum sensor is right here. Okay, so this is the schematic diagram of the optical sensing of the optical system that we used in this study. This is the schematic diagram and this is the original picture. Now, as you can see, it consists of the glass tube, the optical fiber, the three halogen lamps, which is the halogen lamp A, B, and C. And of course, here is the milk chamber where the milk passes through from here and being released from this point into the sampler, that's the plastic cups. Okay, as you can see, this is the original picture, like I said earlier. This is, this is the optical fiber, the three halogen lamps. This is the, uh, the, glass, the glass tube. In between is the milk chamber. The milk chamber is in there. Okay, so um, here is the flow chart. The flow chart of how the milking was carried out. So at first, the cow, the teeth cup cluster was connected to the teeth of the cow. And then the milk flow continuously through a bypass into the milk chamber of the NIR spectrum sensor. The NIR spectrum, the volume of the milk sample in the milk chamber of the NIR spectrum sensor was approximately 30 mil. The NIR spectrum sensor obtains an absorbance spectra, spectra through the milk and was recorded in the wavelength range of 700 to 1050 nanometer. And then the excess milk flow past the milk flow meter and were discharged into the bucket, which we refer to as the bucket milk. And then the milk samples were thickened for reference analysis. The, here is the milking mechanism. So the teeth cup cluster is around here. The milk flows through this bypass into the milk chamber of the NIR spectrum sensor. The sensor obtains an absorbance spectra through the milk and then releases the milk into the milk uh, uh, sampler, the, the plastic cups, and then uh, the milk samples were taken for reference analysis. Here is the 
this is the milk flow meter, and this is where the milk is being discharged into the bucket. There is a bucket right here. Okay, so in this study, we use four hosting cows belonging to Hokkaido University, Dariban. And the measurements were performed in two consecutive milkings, that is milking in the morning and the, in the evening and the following morning. And this, this was carried out for two uh, weeks. The cows used in this study were used during their different lactation periods. Now, in this study, we considered three major milk constituent contents, which include the milk fat, protein, and lactose content. We also considered the solid snout fat, the moisture content as well. This is the milk quality parameters. The milk urea nitrogen was also considered in this study, which stands for the nutritional indicator of the cow. The somatic cell count stands for the health indicator of the cow. It's, it's, uh, it is what we use to know how healthy you know, each of these cows are. So it's also one of the parameters that we considered in our study. Now for the reference analysis, MucoScan instrument was used to determine these three major milk constituent contents. And of course the SNF, which is the solid snuffer, the moisture content and the MUN. For somatic instrument was used to determine the somatic cell counts of the non-homogenized milk obtained in this study. For the chemometric analysis, all the sample data set obtained in this study were used to develop calibration models. Now, the sample data set consists of the NIR spectra data and the reference data. Partial least square statistical method was used to develop cal these calibration models. And the calibration models developed were validated using the full cross validation method. Now, here are the parameters, the statistical parameters used in this study. Here's the regression line, the regression line, the R square value, which is zero. For example, this is 0 0.99. So the R square value is actually the coefficient of determination, which helps us to know that shows the relationship between the NIR predicted data and the uh, reference data of each of the parameters, the mu uh, parameters considered in our study. The, the, we use the bias as well, and then we use the ROPD value. The ROPD value is actually the value that help us to know the applicability of the calibration models that we've developed. Now, the ROPD value that is above 8.0, it means that that calibration model can be used for any application. The value between the range of 5.0 to 7.9 can be used for the quality control aspect. Now, between 3.1 to 4.9 can be used for screening. Between 2.5 to 3.0 can be used for rough screening, and anything less than 2.5 is not recommended for any application. We laid uh, more emphasis on the standard error of prediction. This is because it helps us to know how accurate our predictions are. And so the lower the SCP values, the better the results. Okay, so here is the original, the original spectra, the NIR spectra of the non-homogenized milk obtained in our study. So these are peaks here. This is peak number one, number two, and this is the highest peak, or which can be referred to as the strongest peak. So for the first two peaks, the first two peaks were located in the um, for a 740 nanometer and the 840 nanometer. As you can see, these locations of the spectra, the spectra peak shows uh, the absorption of fat content. That's the triacyl glycerol. So this is an in indication that in this mixed spectra, there are molecules that actually help us to know that there is a fat content in this molecule, that's the milk content itself. So this is an indication of the absorption of the light by the fat content in the milk. Here is the very strong peak at 960 nanometer. And this shows the absorption by water molecule, that's the hydroxyl group. Okay, so here is the validation. This table shows the validation statistics of, uh, the, of the NIR sensing system that we uh, used for the determination of milk quality. So here are the milk quality parameters, the fat, protein, lactose, SNF, moisture content, MUN, and SSC.
Now, looking at the R square value for each of the mu quality indicator, you can see that they are, the R square values were all above zero, uh, zero points nine. We are equal to or above zero point nine, which is a very which is a very good result because the closer the value is to one, the better, the excellent the result is. So also looking at the SCP value, the SCP values were very low. We're very low. You can see that all the SCP values obtained were um, below 0 0.5, which is which means a very good result. So high levels of precision and accuracy was obtained for the determination of each of the mu quality indicators using the NIR spectroscopic sensing system developed in this study. Okay, so here is the, this figure shows the relationship between the reference fat content and the NIR predicted fat content. So as you can see, the ROPD value the R square value was 0 0.99 and the R, the SCP value was 0.17%, which is very good. The ROPD value is, is above um, eight, you know, this is 9.53, which shows that this calibration model can actually be used for any application. So this calibration, um, this calibration model can be used for the monitoring of the milk constituent content of individual cow during milking. Now, I will talk about the milk urea nitrogen. The milk urea nitrogen is a protein feeding efficiency in cow, the protein feeding supply efficiency in the keto. For example, when the protein in the feed of a cow is much, or let me say when the protein content in the milk is very much, or in the cow is very much, or in the field is, is low, I mean. Now, this leads to poor milk production. However, when the protein content is very high in the cow feed, this can lead to environmental pollution through the fecal output of the cow, which can eventually lead to cow infertility. So looking at this, this will help you to know that maintaining balance in the consumption of protein content from the cow feed is very important. And this shows how important it is to monitor the milk urea nitrogen of individual cow during milking for effective cow management. Now, here is the relationship between the reference MUN and the NIR predicted MUN. Looking at the R square value, you can see the R square value was 0 0.94. The SCP value was 0 0.88 milligram per deciliter and the ROPD value was uh, 3.92, which means that this calibration model can be used for screening. And so the monitoring of the nutritional status of individual cow using the MUN, using this calibration model is very possible. Okay, so our, um, somatic cell count. Somatic cell count is actually a universal milk quality indicator and the diagnosis of mastitis disease in cow. Now, for example, when a cow produces less than 100,000 somatic cell counts per meal in its milk, it means that this cow is healthy. However, when a cow produces above a 200,000 somatic cell counts per meal in its milk, it means that this cow may probably have subclinical mastitis disease. This also tells us the importance of the monitoring of somatic cell count of individual cow during milking for effective cow management. So here is the, uh, the reference, the relationship between the reference SCC and the NIR predicted SCC. The R square value was 0 0.91. The SCP value was 0 0.09 log SCC per meal, which is very good. The ROPD value was 3.49, which uh, 41, which means that this, the, the, this calibration model can be used for screening as well. And so it can be used for the diagnosis of mastitis disease, subclinical so mastitis disease in the individual cow during milking. And so the NIR sensing system developed in this study could be used for online real-time determination of the three major milk constituent content, which is the milk, fat, protein, and lactose. And of course, the SNF, which is the solid snow fat, the moisture content, the MUN, and SCC during milking with high precision and accuracy. So now we will take a five minutes break and then 
I will proceed to the next project. Okay, welcome back everyone. Now we'll talk about the measurement accuracy of this NIR sensing system for the progesterone concentration determination of individual cow during milking. Progesterone is an hormone that helps to regulate pregnancy, conception, and estrous cycle. Now, what is estrous cycle? Estrous cycle is actually the period of one heat phase to another heat phase. And this period averages 21 days. Now you can see that when the cow is on heat, this, this curve here means that the cow is on heat. So this says, or this means that when the progesterone content reduced drastically in a cow, or let's say in the cow milk, this means that the cow is on it. And when it proceeds up, it increases, goes upward, and then remains constant. This is actually pregnancy. This is an in indication of pregnancy. And when this constant goes down within 21 days, it means that the cow is not pregnant. And of course, the cow is on it as soon as the progesterone reduces drastically to a certain level. Okay. Now, NIR, NIR spectroscopy has been used, for example, for the detection of pregnancy in sheep. There is, I have not been able to you know, capture any paper saying, talking about the NIR. There is a limited study. In fact, there is no study. I didn't see any study. That's what I'm trying to say. However, even for the, uh, the NIR that has been developed for the detection um, of pregnancy in sheep, is not as effective according to report. Now, the correct progesterone concentration determination in cow has limitation. The methods, the current method in use has uh, limitation, limitations, such as it is destructive in nature. It has a lot to do with chemical. It consumes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. And it's usually done offline instead of online, which is the best. And so there is no success for now for online real-time determination of cow milk progesterone concentration during milking. And so this is what we also uh, addressed in our study using the NIR spectroscopic sensing system that we have developed. And so uh, in this study, for hosting cow belonging to Okaido University, the Ariban was also used. And the milking was of course in the evening and the following morning of milking for, 20, for 28 days. And these cows were used during their different lactation periods. The measurement times was 23 milking times. Now for the reference analysis, competitive enzyme immunosorbent assay, which is the ELISA, was used. And that was what we used to get the standard data that we now use for the chemometric analysis. For the chemometric analysis, all the sample data set obtained in this particular study were randomly divided into two, into two sample sets. The first one is the calibration subset and the second one is the validation subset. Now, we use, uh, after randomly dividing the sample into two subsets, the calibration subset was the two third of the total sample. And that's what we use to develop calibration models using the partial least square statistical method. And the calibration models were validated using the remaining one third of the sample. And so here is the validation, here is the table showing the validation statistical result obtained in our study. Now, uh, this, for four cows, we use four cows, like I said. So we did it individually for each cow. One, two, three, and four. Now, here is the R square value obtained for each cow. For cow 12, 21, as you can see, the R square value is 0 0.73, which is very good. And the, the, the R square value for 12, 63 was 0 0.60, um, zero, which is also very good, very good result. The SCP values were... These are the SCP values obtained. And so this, th there was sufficient levels of precision and accuracy for predicting the milk progesterone concentra concentration of individual cow during milking. Now, here is the result 
the chemical analysis result, which is the standard result, the reference analysis result, and the NIR predicted result. The blue line represents the, the chemical result, which is the standard result, and the NIR is the red one. Okay, so looking at, okay, the cow was overlating, was on heat. When we say ovulation, we also mean the cow is on heat. Okay, so the first um, cow 1221 was on heat in July 24. So as you can see, for the standard result, you can see that the progesterone was down. So this means heat. And then the NIR predicted result was indicating same very similar, it's the progesterone determination of, uh, 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 prediction using the NIR spectroscopy sensing system was also down. Now looking at the second time the car was on heat, which was August, 15th of August, you can see the standard um, analysis, the, 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 the chemical analysis, which is the standard result, which is the actual result and the predicted result. You can see that there is a, big similarity in the result obtained. So this means that for the first time, uh, NIR spectroscopic sensing system could predict the progesterone concentration of individual cow during milking. And so extra status, which is also ovulation status. So extra status and early pregnancy could be determined using NIR sensing system developed in this study thanks to the NIR spectroscopic sensing system. Okay, so now I will talk about the precision and the accuracy of this NIR spectroscopic sensing system when installed into an automatic milking system, which is the final goal. Don't forget, I mentioned that earlier. Okay, so here is the overview of the online NIR spectroscopic sensing system when installed into an automatic milking system. So this is the milking robot here. This is the milk flow, the line, the line tubes. This is the, the, the NIR spectrum sensor is located here. This is the milk sampler, the spectrometer, and the laptop computer where the milk flow rate and the NIR spectra data were recorded. Okay, so now I will talk about the flow chart, the flow chart of the measurements. So at first, a cow walks into the milking robot. And then the milking robot automatically attaches the teeth into the, um, the teeth cup closer into the teeth of the cow. That's the cow nipple and start to milk the cow automatically. Now the milk flow, the milk begins to flow through a bypass into the milk chamber of the NIR spectrum sensor. Now the volume of the milk in the milk chamber of the NIR spectrum sensor was approximately 30 mil. Now the excess milk obtained flowed through the milk flow meter and then released into the bucket, which is referred to as the bucket milk. The NIR spectra data, the NIR spectrum sensor obtains an absorbance spectra through, through the milk and were recorded between the wavelength range of 700 to 1050 nanometer. And then the milk, milk, the milk samples that we are taking with uh, gotten were taken for reference analysis. And let's not forget that the, the recording was done in every 20 seconds, both the recording of the NIR spectral data and the milk flow meter was done in every 20 seconds. Okay, so 26 Osin cow belonging to Tuki Moonwell Dairy Farm at Tochigi Prefecture here in Japan was used in this study. The measurement times was 31 milking times. And the cows were used during their different lactation periods. Now, so this is the, here is the validation statistics for the milk quality indicators considered in this particular study. So you can, as you can see, the R square value for each of the milk the three major milk constituent content and the SEC was really good. The SCP value was also good. And then um, for this, um, in this study, we're able to get sufficient levels of precision and accuracy for predicting milk fat, protein, lactose, and somatic cell count. So by installing the NIR spectroscopic sensing system into an automatic milking system, this can provide dairy farmers, including veterinarians with important information on the milk quality and the physiological status of individual cow during milking.
The NIR spectroscopic sensing system that we have developed in this study can help to improve the deficiency of technology for the production of high quality milk worldwide. It can improve individual cow nutritional status, which has to do with the mercury and nitrogen that I talked about earlier. The physiological status, which has to do with the milk quality, of course. And of course, the ovulation status, which has to do with the detection or the prediction of the progesterone concentration of individual cow during milking. So this NIR sensing system can meet the requirement of dairy farmers and veterinarians, can help to give rapid feedback control for upgrading dairy farm management. And of course, can help to relieve dairy farmers of poor milk production and economic losses. This NIR spectroscopic sensing system, system uh, um, can be used, like I said earlier, and it can help us to achieve dairy precision farming as smart agriculture. Okay, so I want to appreciate, I want to acknowledge my co-investigators, Professor Shuso Kawamura at Hokkaido University, Professor Tomohiro Mitani at Hokkaido University, and also, of course, Hokkaido University Dairy Mart because they allowed us to use their dairy farm. Yeah, my university allowed us, so of course, they always allow us, but I want to say a very big thank you to Hokkaido University Dairy Ban. And also, I want to say a very big thank you to NARU. They provided the funding for this uh, project. Thank you so much, NARU. And also a big thank you to Tuki Moonwell Dairy Farm at Tochigi Prefecture in Japan for, their, for releasing, for allowing us to use the automatic milking system for this project. Also, a very big thank you to Orion Machinery Company and to Soma Optics Limited. Here ends my lecture. Thank you so much for listening. So now I'm open. The floor is open for questions. I'm ready to answer. Okay. Okay.